Uh, good afternoon. My name is George. Uh, welcome to the to this BTS Young Members Lecture titled Vacuum Waterproofing Membrane System, the Advantages, Features, and Case Studies. Uh, this lecture is uh, going to be presented by Enrico Pavese of Fernesco. Now, before I hand over to Enrico, I would like to go through the announcement slides, or is it... Maybe we'll leave it for, 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 for later, so we don't keep you waiting. Just to make note that uh, there's going to be some uh, food and drinks and a good chance for us all to network after the event sponsored by Renesco. And uh, of course, although cell phones are not allowed, or ideally we'd not like to use them, you can scan the QR code and um, find about more how you can uh, enroll with the BTS Young Members or just drop by and attend our event. A few words now about Enrico. First of all, thank you very much for, for being here with us. So Enrico is uh, currently project coordinator for Renesco Group, uh, providing technical and commercial support to colleagues across several global subsidiaries. He is a waterproofing expert with a master's in civil engineering, and he is specializing in waterproofing and injection products for underground construction as well as providing required support to all parties involved, that's the owner, designer, and contractor uh, in any project, as per guidelines for several respective countries. He has extensive chemicals and industrial knowledge, practical applications of these, developed through previous positions, are uh, a building engineer for MAPE from 2014 to 2021. His extensive experience includes uh, includes several international underground structures, private and uh, public infrastructure projects. So without further ado, I will hand over to you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, George, for the introduction. And uh, so it's a pleasure to be here uh, thank you for the opportunity to give this uh, this lecture. So today we talk about uh, vacuum system. Uh, before a short introduction about uh, Renesco, who we are, what we do. Maybe not not everybody knows us. Uh, so we are uh, an international home net, home operated family company, uh, founded in uh, 1965. Um, we are specialized mainly in uh, waterproofing and uh, injection and grouting services. Uh, we operate uh, mainly worldwide, but uh, specifically in Central Europe, uh, Central and Northern Europe, uh, UK, North America, US and Canada. Um, our target market, uh, underground infrastructure in general, so tunnels, stations, caverns, uh, but also environmental engineering, so sewage, and also hydraulic uh, infrastructure for uh, waterproofing of uh, dams, canals, and uh, reservoir. So uh, starting with uh, the waterproofing topic, uh, so a waterproofing system uh, has the task of uh, protecting uh, along the entire uh, service life, uh, normally 100, 120 years, uh, the tunnel construction against damage uh, resulting of uh, moisture of the onion or uh, uh, water entries as well as uh, aggressive water coming from the from the outside uh, it's quite well known that uh, waterproofing uh, cost has a has a small impact on the overall cost of the of the structure so normally it's between 1 and 3% but uh, it's also important to remember that uh, water, water ingress uh, may result in a huge uh, maintenance and uh, repairing cost, up to 80%. So a reliable waterproofing system uh, shall reduce uh, the total cost of the ownership uh, over the entire service life of, uh, of the concrete structure. A little bit of, uh, let's say, history. Uh, the past and the present, so before uh, tunnels uh, were uh, not waterproofed, uh, the main system to prevent water ingress was uh, a drainage system 
by using the by using a backfilling with loose and gravel. Now, system change. Uh, we adopt uh, uh, the the double shell lining. So uh, right now the situation changed a little bit. We have uh, shot grit. We have a waterproofing membrane. We have a final lining, and uh, that is more or less the the current situation. Uh, waterproofing systems are divided in two main uh, two main categories: drained and undrained uh, systems. Uh, drained systems are, uh, let's say, more are less expensive in terms of uh, initial cost. However, uh, needs a permanent uh, and constant uh, maintenance, as well as uh, they uh, basically the concept. Uh, is based on a permanent drainage and, uh, low, and a lower red uh, water table. Uh, undrained or full round system, uh, more expensive, but uh, environmentally more friendly because uh, they do not uh, modify the hydrogeological condition of the, of the sites uh, and also more durable and uh, with, higher, uh, with higher performances. So talking about uh, the vacuum system, uh, this is uh, a system basically which, apply at the, as a, which is applied as a full round. So both uh, the drained and undrained solution may be adopted for uh, captain cover structure as well as for minet tunnel. Um, a little bit, uh, a, li a few words about, uh, about norms. So, there are uh, several, uh, there are uh, some standards available on the market to address uh, the recommended type of waterproofing system according to the water type and class and uh, the type of the structure. So SCA 272, 2009 is one of these one. Um, as you can see here, it's um, for uh, mine tunnel and water tunnel class one, or one and two. Uh, the, the recommended solution is the plastic sheet waterproofing membrane. Uh, as well as uh, SCA, also really 853, 2018 uh, from Germany. This is a um, German standard which provides even a more detailed classification. According to the standard, the maximum water, water tightening class one is generally only achieved with a double shell construction with a seal made by a plastic sheet membrane and with a careful planning of construction. Why both these norms uh, require plastic, uh, uh, plastic sheet waterproofing? It's mainly because uh, this, kind, uh, this kind of uh, material uh, provides uh, uh, several advantages. Uh, possibility of thermal, uh, thermal weld all the joints, possibility to test the joint with higher uh, pressure or vacuum, and uh, also the joint itself uh, result more uh, strong uh, than uh, the material. So basically the, the break uh, outside of the welding scene. Uh, on top of this, uh, oops, on top of this, uh, the, the, this plastic sheet uh, has have also a uh, optimal uh, multi-axial uh, and uh, bar strength. So back to the, back to the standard guideline, uh, the German one. Um, German standard provide also a classification of the type of the waterproofing system to be adopted according to the two main uh, boundary condition we have on site. So basically the type of the water are plus or minus aggressive uh, as well as uh, the water pressure. Um, according to German standard, uh, the full uh, round vacuum system, double sheet membrane is uh, specifically recommended for uh, uh, water head over uh, 60 meter. Position of the supplier. Uh, so also supplier give a, somehow a classification of uh, this uh, waterproofing system. Um, the above standard rank the vacuum uh, uh, double layer system as the most durable and reliable technology when exposed uh, to the, when exposed to uh, water, pre to extreme condition, so high water pressure and chemical aggressive water, and also in general, 
supplier rank this uh, system in, uh, in, the same, uh, in the same position. Short click on synthetic sheet membrane, just uh, a comment on this. Uh, sheet membrane may also be adopted uh, with uh, final short click linings. Uh, I will not spend too much uh, time on this slide. Uh, if you are interested, you can always uh, look at the American uh, Shot Crit Association Bulletin, uh, where uh, the system is uh, described more in the detail. Nice picture, the, the past uh, and the present. So a couple, uh, couple of words. So 1910, uh, Gotthard-based tunnel, uh, where uh, the first, not the first, but one, one of the first uh, uh, waterproofing system is, has been applied. It was a fully bonded water stopper mortar. Present 2010, Gotthard based tunnel, where uh, the loose late PVC with uh, NEAT was, uh, was used to waterproof uh, the, the, base, the Gotthard based tunnel. Talking about, uh, so durability is important. Uh, some, uh, some words also about this. Uh, uh, Belken Tunnel in Switzerland was uh, constructed in 1960 and waterproof with a one millimeter PVC membrane. Picture in the, on the left hand side. In the center and on the right side, uh, we can see some samples uh, because uh, the tunnel uh, is under refurbishment and uh, investigation uh, to prove uh, and to understand uh, the real uh, behavior of the membrane and the durability under uh, real condition is ongoing. Again, uh, durability. Um, the topic of durability evaluation is also addressed in, the, in some guidelines, specifically in the OBV, so Austrian guideline. This can be used uh, can be can provide uh, an important tools uh, to evaluate consistently and homogeneously durability and life expectancy of different materials and of course i guess uh, durability is also a matter of uh, appropriate workmanship you can have uh, the most uh, perform the most uh, uh, the, the top uh, material, you can have the most advanced waterproofing system, but uh, if it's not properly installed, it will be not effective for the day one. Talking about vacuum, vacuum history. So the first double layer uh, liner uh, was adopted in, um, in the reservoir Pont de Cla in France in 1974, but only between 1990 and 1995, the proper vacuum technology was adopted in Germany. What is the concept behind this? Uh, so the idea is to divide the, is to divide the tunnel in um, portion, call it compartment, which can be tested, monitored, injected separately at different construction uh, phases. So this is uh, the um, structure the main structure of a, of a compartment. So the, the core of this uh, system consists of, consist in the two, in the two PVC, in the two PVC layer, welded one on top of each other and in the, in the gap uh, in between them. So the gap uh, is connected uh, at the, at the intrados of the, of the structure via control socket and uh, injection tubes. So the idea, is to put this uh, gap between the two layer under a vacuum. If uh, the vacuum is maintained uh, along the time, the, the entire surface and the welded seam are uh, working properly, means that uh, are tested. So the detecting principle, because the system itself work also as a, as a detecting, uh, as a detecting uh, uh, system for uh, possible water inflow. 
if there is a damage in the membrane, the, the water will be flow in between the two layer, but it will stay inside uh, the main compartments. And, will, and the water itself will be pushed uh, through the control grout socket, through the hoses on the concrete surfaces where it can be detected. So the last phase would be the sealing of the compartment after, uh, after the, the injection. What is important for uh, this system is uh, exactly the leak control during the, uh, the possibility of the leak control during the entire service life, uh, and also as well uh, the re reinjectability of the, of the compartments. The system, the vacuum system, may be used uh, for uh, both uh, minor tunnel as well as for the cut and cover. The use of the vacuum system for cut and cover shall be uh, carefully evaluated. The system needs to be uh, properly confined to ensure an effective uh, uh, repairing injection, but most important to avoid the swelling of the compartment during the injection and the consequent peeling stress on the, um, on the welding. So fully bonded and uh, glued homogeneous PVC or FPO system might be considered as an alternative. This system combines uh, the advantage of flexible sheet waterproofing with the fully bonded area approach uh, with, a with a documented product lifetime expectancy, a permanent seaming by uh, thermal welds, and uh, as well, uh, they avoid uh, the lateral migration uh, along uh, between the membrane and the, and the concrete. Let's move to the, our case study, uh, the tunnel the tunnel Rue de Nation in, uh, in Switzerland. So the project is located in Geneva, uh, near to the border with, uh, with France. Specifically, the area is the area of uh, Saconet. The, the area is very close to the, to the airport as well as to the border with, uh, with France and near to the international organization. So um, the high vehicle circulation from highway and uh, cross-border transit through Rue, de, so through Rue de Fernet and Rue de Colorve is generating a high traffic impact on, um, in uh, Rue de Fernet and along the entire area of uh, Saconet, which is this area. So the new tunnel, together with uh, the airport junction upgrade, re released this congestion of the main axis and reduced the above ground traffic in the Grand Saconet main road artery. Uh, basically, the traffic will be diverted through the, through the tunnel below Grand Saconet Hill in the, Appia, in the Appia area, which is here in the south. So the main uh, part of the project consists uh, of in a mined tunnel, so the, the, re the red one, two cut and cover, north, two cut and cover portion, north and south portal, and, uh, and uh, a shaft with an, emergency, with an emergency exit. So the scope of work of Renesco was, the, uh, was to waterproof the mined tunnel, the two portal, north and south, uh, approximately um, 52 and 36 meters long were not our scope of work because uh, waterproofed uh, with a typical uh, bituminous membrane. As I said, so we, for this project, uh, the vacuum system was adopted for the entire mined section, uh, which is approximately 500 meters long, and for the and for the shaft. Uh, 25 meters deep, connected with the running tunnel with, uh, an, emergency, with an emergency tunnel. Uh, inside the tunnel, there are also uh, three niches. Also, the niches were waterproof with the, with the same vacuum system. So for, it's important to understand why the, the, the designer, the clients, Make the choice to make the choice uh, to and uh, decide to use uh, such uh, demanding uh, such demanding system. First of all, uh, the 
the designer and the owner uh, decide to go with a water tightness class one, means that the tunnel needs to be completely dry, so no moisture, no moisture is uh, accepted in the introdux of the in the introdux of the tunnel. But most important, the complex uh, geological and hydrogeological condition, uh, <coughs> a poor and heterogeneous soil, uh, very very permeable bodies. Uh, uh, separated by permeable clayly and silty strata, different aquifer and saturated uh, strata in a different level, and also a quite high water table, which always stand above, uh, mainly above on the, on, of, of the tunnel. So for uh, Rudenation, the, the stratigraphy adopted was a geotextile regularization layer of uh, 800 grams uh, per square meter in uh, polypropylene, a first layer of PVC membrane, a translucent second layer again in PVC, and finally a protection, uh, a protection sheet. Uh, what is important to say is that uh, the, um, the size of the compartment was a key element and was uh, somehow uh, addressed by the cooperation between the cooperation between uh, Renesco and the designer, because uh, uh, due to the experience we did in, uh, in other projects, we were conscious that uh, the compartment dimension will affect uh, also the productivity. So the two main compartments adopted were uh, a 40 meter square compartment for the crown and a 35 meter, uh, 35 square meter compartment for the, for the invert. Um, the system uh, was applied along the entire length of the mined tunnel and terminated uh, at uh, both portals uh, in uh, two different ways. So for the south portal, the, the package was terminated with a tape termination for the North Portal, uh, also a tape was adopted, but uh, uh, the system was overlapped and, uh, and um, connected uh, with the um, bituminous membrane for uh, with the bituminous membrane of the cut and cover section. Some peculiarities: yes, there was a primary compartmentalization, but uh, due to the again. Due to the um, difficult hydrogeolo hydrogeological condition, uh, the designer made the choice to also adopt an external compartmentalization. So they divided the, the, the area outside from the waterproofing, so in, in between the waterproofing and the substrate uh, with tapes uh, to avoid the water circulation. most challenging part of the project, the, the installation. So the installation was divided in uh, basically two, two main stage. The phase one, the prefabrication of the compartment. So uh, compartment were uh, prefabricated uh, in, uh, our where, in our warehouse in a controlled environment. They were pre-tested, repacked uh, to be ready to be used uh, and to be installed uh, via, the automatic, uh, via the automatic equipment. The first uh, waterproofing operation began in uh, December 2020 with the, with the shaft. So shaft waterproofing terminated in 2021. This was also quite challenging. Uh, the, shaft the shaft was not big, the diameter was uh, 6.8 uh, meters. Uh, so uh, really, uh, let's say, uh, we put really a big effort in the, oops, in the coordination between the operatives and welders and crane operators. The proper, uh, the proper tunnel waterproofing operation began in mid of uh, November 21, after the tunnel excavation completion and uh, primary shot creek lining application. So we ended this operation in May 2022 
And uh, as I said, uh, we adopt uh, an extensive, uh, we, we use uh, extensively semi-automatic and automatic gantries in combination with the standard scaffolding uh, to, to install the, the prefabricated compartment for two main reasons, health and safety first, because uh, of course a prefabricated compartment weight is, uh, is uh, excessive to be handled. And the second, uh, because we have to match a very tight schedule and, uh, and, stick, to the, and stick to the program. Uh, specific specific uh, manual installation, by the way, was adopted uh, uh, for also niches, uh, so for detailing, so niches, uh, as well as for the uh, termination of the membrane at the portals area. Some picture from, uh, from the job site. This is uh, the semi-automatic gantries used for the, for the invert. And here we can see the automatic gantry adopted for, uh, for the crown, and as well as uh, the, the standard scaffolding, which uh, was adopted principally for the installation of the, only of the protection membrane. Some, uh, also some picture from uh, the, the detailing. This was the, the this is uh, uh, the waterproofing of the niches. Uh, it, um, we can see that because uh, the small dimension of these elements, the application was entirely manual, but again, all the compartment positions and sizes were uh, planned and designed in advance. So this is, this was, this is a picture of, uh, say, part, uh, which is part, uh, which was part of the process. North portal application, we can see the tape termination as well as the tape for the transition between uh, the PVC system and, uh, and uh, the bituminous membrane system. South portal, here the termination was uh, slightly easier. We just terminate the, the package on the diaphragma wall at the, at the entrance of the, of the tunnel. Last, uh, last topic related with the installation. Uh, the testing was important and, uh, consistent, and a consistent part of the installation operation. And vacuum tests uh, were carried out uh, at a different construction phase to ensure the water tightness of, uh, of each element. So testing were carried out uh, immediately after the waterproofing installation during and after reinforcement installation, after concreting, and also uh, some testing were uh, carried out before uh, re-level of the groundwater table. Some conclusion. So construction industry calls for uh, tunnels with extended life uh, in a more and more demanding environmental condition. So high water pressure, for example. Uh, Vacuum system can bring uh, remarkable benefits because uh, it has uh, a lot of advantage. Mainly, this is testable. It's th the testability and monitoring uh, also permanently of, uh, of the entire surface uh, and of the wells. This increases the general overall quality of the, of the waterproofing, but also the testability and monitoring uh, during the construction phases and structure service life uh, is important uh, because uh, it's, uh, you can address uh, directly, again, the, the leaks, uh, but also you can address the responsibility. Also, you can do an active management of the, of the leakage. It prevents uh, lateral migration and uh, it's a cost-effective uh, uh, system for, uh, for uh, reparability because the injection is limited uh, to a small, uh, to a small uh, area. At le finally, it's uh, again, the safety of the system is the highest one and uh, as well as the redundancy. So you have different level of uh, barriers 
between uh, the water and, uh, and the structure itself. Thank you for your attention. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Enrico. Uh, now it's the time for questions. We have two microphones in the room, so feel free to raise your hands. And thank you, Enrico. Uh, interesting stuff, and nice to get it right up to date. Um, you talked just very briefly about drain systems and I accept entirely that the maintenance of drain systems is a major issue but the but the other aspect of that is that a drain system means you don't need a, a thick heavy concrete lining to withstand the build-up of pressures so I, whether you have any comments about that balance but then my next question is, you mentioned, I think, six bar as a, a threshold for um, the buildup of an outside pressure. How, how uh, do you have a figure for, for flow that you can handle or manage? Um, and what about how long does the pressure take to build up? Because in a lot of these rock situations, Yes, we do pre-grouting. Mm. You do an initial spray concrete. Um, but, but is there a, a threshold that you can live with and manage? Or do you really want to go for no flow at all? So uh, concerning what one comment about the, 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 the load on the final lining, yes, the, with a drainage solution, you can uh, so you don't need basically the, the structure doesn't need to be, uh, let's say, dimensioned uh, according to the water pressure. It's uh, it's drained. Agree. On on the other end, you are continuously draining the the water in the ground. So this is also for me a matter of uh, envir environment. So. You, with a, a full round system, you don't touch basically the hydrogeological condition, or you, let's say you touch partially the hydrogeological condition. With a drainage solution, with a drainage solution, the, 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 the impact on the, on, on the environment is uh, much higher. Also, uh, yeah, maintenance, uh, can be higher because uh, the clogging of the, for example, of the drainage uh, of the drainage. Um, finally, the, 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 also the, the, the entire, uh, let's say, performances of the drainage system is definitely lower. You have not uh, the system to uh, replace, uh, restore eventually the, the membrane in case of a failure. You have not an active also monitoring system, means that uh, once the, the w once the membrane is uh, is damaged, you have no any other chance uh, to maybe perforate and uh, and inject. It's it's a different uh, it's a different concept. On the other end, uh, drainage solution helps, for example. Um, to excavate and to build tunnels under extreme condition because you drain the water, you lower the water table, so it's, it's easier for construction, uh, construction process. So, uh, in terms of volume of water that uh, that can be managed uh, through this uh, vacuum system, this is your question. Well, from before you apply the the second member. Can you fabricate it? Because it's 
through the network, so it's going around the network. Yeah. So the capacity of the brain to depend on the, on the VHF cell or on the, on the Russian model or the Mayan model. Basically, the, 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 the material, so the, the, the system is not applied to be to drain. So it's uh, the, so the, the one thing is the installation. Yes, maybe you need to lower to lower the water table because, of course, uh, I mean it's not possible to apply the membrane if uh, if uh, there is uh, an extreme uh, entrance of water. But uh, once the membrane is installed, so there is no drainage. So all the sh all the inner shell takes the load as well of, of, of the water. Is there a question back at the back or no? There is one in the front. Uh, hello, uh, Tom McGowan, uh, Betty Consulting. Uh, thank you very much for the talk. I finally understand what vacuum waterproofing is, um, so I'm <laughs> glad I've come and seen this. One thing I didn't fully understand is you, s I believe you said that you can inject between the two layers yeah. to seal any leaks, and it's re-injectable. Um, I'm just wondering if you could elaborate on the processes you'd have to follow to make sure that you can Reinject the compartment. And what chemical that would be. Thank you. So, uh, yes, it's reinjectable depending on the material you, you are going to use. So, using acrylate, reinjection re is, uh, is possible. Uh, you need to flush the hose that you use for the injection. Yes, and then, uh, then that, uh, that port can be reused. With other material uh, like uh, polyurethane gel, uh, this would be much more difficult. Okay. So, just so I understand, the, if you inject with acrylate and you re inject, it will debond between the acrylate and the PVC and be able to travel further through the, the cell? N no, the injection is done in the compartment. So, if uh, I scroll back a little bit. So maybe it's not very, he, the compartment is uh, somehow what, what you can see here. So in case of injection, the, the resin will go exactly in between the two, the two, the two layer and will seal uh, the, the, the entire compartment. If you need to re-inject, of course, you need to flush the, flush the hose that you use for the injection. For example, if you inject from this port, you need to flush that hose. And then uh, if uh, still you have uh, a leaking from, uh, from the tube, then uh, you can re-inject. Okay, okay, so just to confirm with acrylate, even if you have acrylate between the two layers in the cell, yeah. it will still separate and allow more to flow through. No, I mean, the, the target of the injection is to seal completely the compartment. Yeah. So maybe you can have additional damage, but in general, the acrylate, once you inject the acrylate, the, the, the compartment should be sealed. Right, okay. No, we, we have time, so I, I'll take my chance to, to do a question as well. Um, Okay, so the compartments come pre prefabricated. Not always. Not always. It's, uh, I mean, this was uh, our uh, somehow choice based on previous experience uh, uh, to optimize installation and quality. Because, of course, uh, having a prefabricated uh, compartment, uh, uh, with a prefabricated compartment, we can uh, pre test uh, the compartment in the warehouse. And uh, once we are, we are testing on site, uh, we somehow are more sure or we are sure that uh, the test will be, will be okay. Okay. And um, are there any insights or advice that you could share uh, for the contractor on site? Um, if you, 
are there any adverse conditions that someone should avoid that might affect the um, the, the the solid construction of the seals and the welds, like uh, excess humidity or dust? Or this is prob this is uh, can be this can happen, especially when talking about cut and cover. So yes. Uh, I mean, uh, for example, enviro environment uh, is, uh, especially when working in a, in a cut and cover uh, structure, uh, may affect uh, the, the quality of the welding. Uh, so maybe, so this is one of the things to be evaluated. Uh, it's uh, for sure uh, is, uh, the, is a very, how to say, is a system which has a high performance, uh, but is also demanding. In terms of uh, in terms of resources, so the the process uh, we need to go through is mainly a, a risk assessment uh, and say if the if this kind of system is required or not. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Enrique, for the presentation. I have a question uh, because in some geological conditions you can find um, gas inside the tunnel. So in, inside the rock mass. So the vacuum, uh, can the vacuum system be used to prevent the, the, the ingress of gases in, in some tunnels? Good question. So um, in general, yes. So uh, this is a PVC membrane in general are uh, effective uh, in, in this, uh, are effective in this condition. Uh, Concerning maybe the chemical resistance, uh, this would be something to be discussed uh, because uh, uh, there are maybe, there are for sure material which are more, uh, I would say, uh, appropriate uh, for, uh, for, for, this kind, uh, for this kind of application. But uh, in general, sheets waterproofing membrane may, may be adopted. Uh, I'll ask one. So uh, the, uh, in the presentation, you uh, showed one of the photographs where there was a tunnel from 1960s in which the samples were taken. Uh, yes. The, could you could you share more about the uh, the state of waterproofing membrane which was found and was there any degradation or? Yeah. So. The, the investigations are under uh, are ongoing, so the results are not published yet, especially for the last uh, for the last sample, because the the refurbishment just started. Uh, in general, uh, on only let's say looking at the at the sample we get, uh, uh, we had a positive feedback. Uh, this is also, I mean, uh, this is not only uh, let's say. Uh, from uh, this tunnel, other tunnels in Switzerland were uh, were investigated, uh, and uh, let's, and uh, we and the the, the the membrane tested with uh, a good feedback in terms of longevity of uh, of this kind of products. Neat, uh, the Gotthard base tunnel. So NEAT uh, is based, uh, and uh, the specification that comes from uh, this, uh, let's say, that comes from this project uh, are uh, based uh, also on this investigation. And from from NEAT, uh, from Gotthard, uh, then uh, more or less all uh, all the let's say were uh, were placed the the bases uh, for the uh, life for the 120 100 120 years life expectancy of this uh, of this system hi shriranga <coughs> uh, i would like to know what, what is the uh, mechanism be, as in how is it installed like what is the connection between the primary lining and the waterproof membrane the so I have not the, the picture, but uh, the so the, the geotextile is nailed to the to the substrate, yeah, via with uh, PVC discs, or with uh, with disc, and then uh, the prefabricated membrane is uh, somehow spot weld, so hanged to the to the discs. Uh, 
Um, <clears throat> my name is Ade. I work for SES. Um, so the question is, what kind of damage can be done to the membrane that will condemn the whole compartment? So it's meant to last for 120 years, but are there particular damage or use of the tunnel that can damage the membrane and will require the change of a whole compartment? So damage mainly occur during construction phases. So, and uh, this is, uh, I would say the main, the main uh, damage that can occur is typically say during the concreting uh, during the concreting installation, so at the, at, the, at the bulkhead, or for example, also during the installation of the rebar, but also, for example, in uh, cut and cover structure, the backfilling is, uh, is absolutely critical. On the other hand, also, the, as I said, uh, possible damage occur occurring on the membrane may be the, during the injection if uh, the vacuum is not properly confined. So the, the, the weldings are uh, uh, somehow are stress uh, and, uh, and uh, the, the, there is a peeling, uh, there is a peeling stress of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the welding because uh, the, 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 inf the, the, the blow of the compartment during the injection. Okay, then if we don't have any other questions around the room. Oh, we have one there. Thank you. <coughs> Hello, uh, good evening, Enrico. Um, good evening. You said, and I might have picked this up wrong, but you said there were terminating compartments outside the membrane? No. You know, in, in that job, the, your terminations at either end of the tunnel, but you said something about doing uh, compartments outside when you showed the yeah. I mean the tapes on the door. Yeah, the tape. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, here. <coughs> yeah, but no. The, there was the next. The next picture. There was a guy. Yeah, this one. Ah, uh, no. This is. Uh, uh, this is a different. Uh, this was not a termination. Yeah. So this was a compartmentalization. Outside of the membrane. Yeah. So in between. Uh, the let's say the, the waterproofing system and the substrate yeah in this case yeah. Shot but, and they were terminating the pvc onto this in, in was not terminated was only like uh, so w was welded but not terminated so the, the water oh yeah sorry i don't mean yeah like, but the, yeah, the, the, yeah but yes the, the the waterproofing was welded onto the this on, the first layer of waterproofing was welded onto this uh, onto this tape yeah. So basically, the, the external surface was divided in sectors. It's compartmentalized as yeah. well. Uh, what size were those compartments? Who? Uh, it, that there was eight compartment, uh, and the total surface of the tunnel was uh, twelve thousand square meter. All right, so a big. Yeah, big yeah. one. Well, and, and the geotextile was just laid between the yes. terminations. Then. Yes. Yes. But they weren't worried about, like, unbalancing the water pressure. The this was done especially to avoid, uh, because especially in the north portal, which was lower than the south, okay. we had a lot of water. All right, so it's a stop and So in the, the, the idea was to avoid that, to, to, let's say, to drain the water, and uh, to drain the water to the south portal, which was exactly the, the point where we start with waterproofing. So uh, it's not, again, is not in my presentation, but yeah. uh, on top of this, we also adopt. Uh, uh, we also need to install minimum two uh, drainage point. Uh, let's say in stainless steel, uh, in stainless steel, uh, to to drain out the water during the construction phase. So uh, as the shoulders come along, you have to get whatever's be locked in the, the last compartment. You have to yeah. drain it out from behind the membrane. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the, where it is. The sump pit were then after uh, sealed uh, and, uh, and injected. All right, so yeah, yeah, so put the pressure released there. Okay, yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, then, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, there are some announced slides, so yeah. Thank you, Enrico. <laughs> Thank you.
So, uh, as mentioned at the start of the session, there is a drinks and food sponsored by UNESCO, which is not appearing here, no problem. Um, it's by them anyway, so stick around and enjoy. Um, the following BTS Young Members event will not take place in here, rather than in Dublin, Ireland. It's a joint seminar day with uh, Engineers Ireland titled Transferable Lessons in Tunneling and Geotechnical Engineering. Uh, it's going to be held online in Dublin, but uh, you can uh, in person, but you can attend online. Uh, you need to register for instructions. So contact us uh, to receive these instructions if interested. On the 16th of March, our schools and university subcommittee are organizing a workshop at the University of Warwick titled Risk Assessment of Logistics in TBM Tunnel Projects. Contact Mr. Sandeep Nirmal uh, for further information. Uh, it's the, the gentleman standing over there attending to your questions. Thursday, 23rd of March, we have an in-person workshop in here at the IC. Uh, this is going to be hosted by SICA. Thank you very much and further announcements about the title, the agenda of the workshops, and how to register and attend uh, will be communicated through our usual channels in social media and newsletter. Again, on the same day, there is a BTS uh, March meeting titled Geopolymer Concrete in Tunnel, Developments in Ultra-Low Carbon Concrete for Underground Works. We have a uh, Harding Prize um, on Thursday, the 13th of April, and finalists are to be announced soon, so keep an eye and an ear open. The BTS annual dinner is going to take place on the 28th of April at the usual place, the brewery. So bookings are now open, and we are looking forward to see you there. On the 3rd July, until the 7th of July, at Warwick University, there is going to be this year the BTS Design and Construction course. So uh, bookings are now open and uh, early booking discount is available until the 30th of April. For further information and how to stay in touch with us, um, keep uh, being informed about our events, but also we'd like to reach out to us with ideas and how you'd like to contribute in our effort of uh, dispensing the tunneling knowledge and uh, organize something together, yeah, feel free to contact us in this account. Scan the QR code, you'll be directed. Thank you very much. <laughs>